really excited to be here today and have the opportunity to talk with you guys about wind loads uh, on non-building structures. Uh, if you're anything like me as a practicing engineer for buildings, um, similar to what you see here in this picture, uh, while we like to spend a lot of our time on the building, there end up being a whole lot of pieces that are non-building related, canopies, solar PV, screen walls, parapets, um, that we still need to consider whether they're attached to the building or freestanding. And the code often struggles to give us really solid guidance on those. So today we're gonna just focus on those elements. We're gonna just talk about wind loads and how to, do, uh, how to deal with those um, non-building structures. All right, um, so as Maria mentioned, I work with the NCSEA Wind Engineering Committee. And as part of that committee, um, we have really focused on, I'll say, advocating for the practicing engineer. So we have done a handful of surveys and the survey I'm gonna show you here is a little bit outdated, um, but this survey allows me to give you sort of a full cycle so you can see um, sort of the impacts of this study. A more recent study was done last year and, and we're halfway through that cycle. So in this 2011 survey, NCSEA sent it out to about 10,000 engineers and there were a handful of questions asked, but to kick off our, our talk today, I wanna to focus on the, the, the question of what modifications or additions would you like to see in the wind sections of ASE 7? Um, and I've put the top five answers here on the board and I'll, I'll flip through them here um, quickly. So, so the first one request was to simplify the provisions and we could do an entire two hour session uh, on this topic. Um, and as a voting member of the ASC 722 Wind Load Committee, I can promise you that that is a very strong focus of that committee um, for the next code cycle. So we won't spend too much time on that here, but my hope is at the end of this two hour session that we have in some way simplified what already is in the provisions, taken out things that aren't relevant to your design, focused on the really key components. So the second most popular answer was to go back to UBC. Um, and while um, I know a lot of old timers would, you know, pay their uh, salary to get to get back to a UBC type of provisions, that's just not the reality of where we are. Um, so, you know, kind of marrying item one and two, we are working to simplify provisions, make them easier for the practicing engineer, but we are going to live in the IBC ASCE 7 world. Uh, the third request was to stop changing. Again, we could talk a whole lot about this request, um, uh, but I can promise you this is something that does sit in the back of the heads of, of the code writers, um, really only making changes when they're meaningful and necessary. And now this fourth one is where we're really going to spend our two hours here today. There was an overwhelming request um, back in 2011 by practicing engineers to help with guidance on things like open structures, canopies, tall parapets, solar PV and screen walls. Um, these are these not these represent those non building structures. So maybe we actually understand fairly well how to do wind design on our building, or at least we have many options available to us in the current code. But where we're struggling a little bit as item four here represents uh, is these non building structures. So that's the intent of this session here today. And just for completeness, um, there were a handful of people who actually um, like the ASC 710 provisions and thought we had addressed some things there. So as a result of that survey, NCSEA made recommendations to this ASC 7 win committee. And so at the time it was the ASC 7 16 win committee. Uh, and the first recommendation was to reduce the number of methods down to one computational and one tabular method. Um, that was not successful uh, in ASC 716. It's being revetted in 722, so stay tuned. Um, the second recommendation was to consolidate the wind provisions that live in ASC 7 and IBC, and then to further simplify provisions. That effort has been taking place. We've slowly stripped meaningful things out of IBC and put them into ASC 7. The third one, which we are gonna focus on here today, was to please provide criteria for some of these commonly encountered conditions like canopies, tall parapet, parapets, mechanical screens, and PV panels. Some of these did make it into ASC 716. Some of them are making their way into ASC 722, but we will talk about all four of those conditions here today. Uh, the next recommendation was to please provide some design pr procedures for rooftop units on tall buildings. Anyone who's really dug into ASCE 7 realizes that there's this crazy disconnect at 60 feet. Um, we'll talk about this a handful of times here today. 60 feet does not represent any magical 
change in wind phenomenon. It's really about how a method was generated and what data, what was the test data that was used to generate that. And so again, we'll hit on this briefly here today, but um, the idea would be to go ahead and give us recommendations for how to deal with rooftop equipment on tall buildings. Um, the fifth one here is to simplify solid freestanding wall provisions. And while we'll get to this um, later in the talk, there weren't any meaningful changes in 716, uh, and I'm not convinced we're gonna have any meaningful changes in 722 to solid freestanding wall provisions, but I do think if we dig into them, and we will today, we can simplify them on our own if we understand the intent of the code.